Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. You're listening to the podcast presented by the Daily Pal. This is Pranuti, Amit, and Purva. And the three of us are from a Bombay-specific culture and food site called The Daily Pow. And this is our fortnightly podcast, The, the Powcast. So we're, um, you know, we always lead with the section called Bombay Binge, which tells you what to eat and drink in Bombay. And um, today, it's it's usually uh, a section that I I take charge of. And this time, we have Pranuti stepping in. because Once she again. Is, once again, last week it was Amit with the snack subs- subscriptions and this time it's Pranati with something um, that's very close to her heart. She's the, are you the chief coffee drinker of the group? Yes. Is that I'm, what you're I'm called? the only coffee drinker, uh, which is what well, Amit of, used to be. And yeah, kind of surprising given that we're journalists. Yeah, and so Pranati is going to be sort of um, giving us uh, the lowdown on all, like a, a ho- host of new local coffee brands, uh, really exciting ones. And um, if you're a discerning coffee drinker you need to be listening in Bombay binge so um you know the last i would say four to five years have been really good for uh, people who are um, slightly nerdy about their coffee um because you have uh, you know a bunch of new uh, players that have entered the coffee market um some of these are second generation uh, coffee farmers you know sort of kids of uh, coffee growers who are internet savvy and want to take their sort of ancestral business to another level revamping it revamping it etc and sort of want to get into (coughs) e-commerce and you also have uh, the entrepreneur that does not come from a coffee growing family but um, sort of sources coffee from various estates down south and sells it so um, the first I think I think the first to do this was in 2012. Uh, this guy called Kunal Ross. Um, he runs a company called the Indian Bean, and he quit his advertising job uh, to start this company. And he essentially sourced coffee from a bunch of estates uh, in the south, from Karnataka, from uh, Tamil Nadu, and started selling them uh, online. Mm. And um, his USP was single estate coffee. That is coffee sourced from. One estate. Usually, uh, you before that, the filter coffee that you got in the market was a blend. So essentially, right. what farms do, coffee farms do, is that they sell their beans wholesale. Mm-hmm. So you have no idea which farm your coffee is coming from, right? right? So, for example, Philips Tea and Coffee, which is a you know a very famous coffee uh, shop in uh, Bombay. You know, you bought their pea berry or you bought various varieties of coffees, but you have no idea where that coffee, you don't know the provenance. So for people who are into things like provenance, and I think uh, it's a very small group of people still, but growing, um, you know, I suppose this has really sort of caught their fancy, knowing which estate their coffee okay. is coming from. But why is this important though? I mean, you know Kunal, uh, right, personally, and so what inspired him to do this? Is he a really passionate coffee drinker? Yeah, he is a passionate coffee drinker and the idea was to showcase the diversity of coffee um, in the country. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, if you ask me, is single estate coffee better than, uh, you know, your, say your average South South Indian filter coffee. Or your Philips. Or your Philips. I mean, you know, I've had uh, a lot of great, uh, okay, I'm going to keep Philips out of this. Mm. I actually don't particularly like Mm Philips' coffee, but um, a lot of great uh, South Indian coffee, you know, places that, like holes in the wall that mm-hmm. sell great coffee, it's as good as the single estate mm-hmm. stuff. You know, so quality wise, this is in the south. You see, this is, yeah, in the south, mm-hmm. or you know, even like the stuff you get at Martunga, for example. Okay. Yeah. Of course, it compares to your single estate mm-hmm. stuff. It's equally good. But what's important is that um, you know about the coffee. We we know more about the coffee growing culture in the south. Mm-hmm. Also, they can control the way coffee's roasted. Roasted and. That affects the taste ultimately. Yeah, it has right? a it has a huge uh, part to play in the taste. So, right. for example, Blue Tokai, which uh, started three years ago in they're Delhi, a, in Delhi, they're a Delhi-based uh, coffee company. Again, they do single estate coffees, and uh, they have their own roasting machine. 
so they uh, they control how the coffee is roasted i mean there are various kinds of roasts various grades and right. the roast has an uh, impact on the flavor yeah the indian bean yeah. gets coffee roasted in sort of various roasteries in the south but again they have a say in how it's roasted uh there's a very new company these guys started uh last year it's called black bazaar coffee uh started by someone for whom um the coffee is important yes mm-hmm. but it's also it's more important how the coffee is grown so she sort of focuses her name is arshia bose and um she sort of her focus is shade grown coffee cultivation and growing coffee in uh, sort of biodiverse areas right It's so a very interesting name Black Baza. Black Baza, yeah. So, so it's, it's Black Baza it's been named after a bird. Okay. That's it's a small uh, bird of prey and it's found in dense forests. So basically if if you spot a Black Baza, you know that that forest has a lot of tree cover. Oh nice. And in fact all Black Baza coffees are named after flora and fauna that are good ecological indicators. So it's not necessarily a Black Baza, so it could be something else but by the same by arshia or is it so black bazaar black is the name of the coffee the company okay. and you also have a coffee called black bazaar and okay. you have other which is the one you tried the black which is which is, which is the right. one i tried but uh the one that i recommended in in this post that we did last week uh was the whistling schoolboy right yeah it's also a bird i think right <laughs> yeah it, it is a bird yeah. so So yeah so for um so people sort of have different uh, motives like mm-hmm. Bose's motive is really more uh, ecological conservation mm-hmm. and I mean coffee is an important part but that's her primary uh, this you know this idea of shade grown is that something that is basically coffee that's grown in sh- in a sh- sort of shaded specific shaded area is yeah, obviously in the shade of trees is is better right uh, i mean because i mean coffee needs shade mm-hmm. and the whole idea is to have uh, multiple species of trees mm-hmm. so that you have uh, you know you maintain biodiversity mm-hmm. and not just a single species of trees yeah. and so this also has an a, you know an impact on the flora and fauna and mm-hmm. also the trees are important because they should be native so variety this is a form of sustainable cultivation exactly the trees exactly um but um So aside from the Indian bean and black baza and uh, blue tokai you haven't spoken about my favorite name halli berry halli <laughs> berry yeah i knew it so uh, halli berry um uh, so it it comes from a farm in uh, chikmagalur in karnataka and these guys are traditional coffee growers right. so they've been growing coffee since the 1940s they have this beautiful estate uh which they've converted into uh, a lodge type thing so you can rent out these bungalows okay and they were selling their coffee wholesale and a couple of years ago they started they packaging it as halli berry now halli is canada for village okay berry coffee berry and of course mm. the pun is you know is halli berry <laughs> so it's run by this woman and her three daughters and all of them are astonishingly beautiful i have to say <laughs> it's like, like facebook stalking <laughs> you know yeah. i you know when i was researching the piece I, i looked them up and they're all like they're model beautiful these yeah, halli berry so women the, so the they name did, they chose the name appropriately and yeah they did change, uh, you know they could give <laughs> halli berry Uh, run for her for her money but it's great that you know like a wholesale supplier is actually uh getting into their own niche sort of labels i right. think that's really yeah, something to look forward to yeah i mean this is sort of newer to. younger generation so yeah. uh, you know i found a whole bunch of other coffee companies so there's something called riverside which is based in coorg and these guys started this year and um this it's run by this chap called rishwin devaya and again ancestral coffee mm-hmm. estate uh but started selling coffee online only this year um then seven beans is another new company it's based out of chikmagalur in karnataka again uh one of the partners i mean the partners i think their brothers shetty brothers they own the estate but they started selling online only in 2015 um then there's the flying squirrel uh they started in 2013 and again one of the partners is uh, a kurgi and has right. an estate and there's uh, a place called estate craft which is also in kurg which so, does coffee. so just like in terms of availability are all these sort of readily available like you you like how was your discovery besides the one that have their own online stores like an indian bean and a blue tokai which have their own stores correct yeah so these guys are pretty so strong on social media which is how you, you got know, to know we we found them right and the others like i i found one called barbara berry mm-hmm. uh barbara <coughs> berry is uh, produced by this very old coffee plantation called mg plantations 
and I found this at Food Hall. Food Hall mm-hmm. in Palladium actually has an incredible range of coffee. You, in fact, Barbara Berry, is something you said that also supplying to Blue Tokai, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So Blue Tokai um, essentially sources coffees from various estates. So they source uh, the Barbara Berry, but um, the the two are likely to be very different. Like the one sold by Blue Tokai and the one sold by the plantation itself online because the roasts are different. 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 Right. So and you also get these coffees uh, in a lot of restaurants and cafes in the city, right? Because you are now, ca- like earlier, you would basically be ordered a coffee, you'd get Nescafe. Right. But a lot of like newer establishments. No, or you would get, you would get filter coffee. Uh, like Gaylord, for example, okay. has that Kona coffee, but it's, okay. it's awful. Okay. You know, because it's, uh, it's brewed badly and it's mm-hmm. probably rubbish coffee. But like Blue Tokai and uh, Indian Bean are in a bunch of places, right? I mean, That's like right. Kalabura Cafe and... Yeah. Le 15 and... Le 15. Le 15. Mm-hmm. Are, are restaurants advertising the fact that they are... Uh, is it something Some that of them do. Waiters like, are say, saying it. So, for example, Farmer and Sons, right. which you reviewed... Um, They've they've mentioned that they sell Frowners coffee. So right. Frowners is one of the Indian, Indian beans, beans labels. Right. Yeah. Um, then Law Fifteen, she's sort of uh, you know talked about how she sells Blue Tokai coffee. Um, that's it's brewed in her cafe. Um, then Kalaghora Cafe doesn't advertise it. Yeah. But uh, they sell Indian bean coffee. You know what's interesting, Pranthi? I mean, there are so many brands, but you've tried them all, and you are sort of a you know, a drinker, but do you think that there is sort of, I mean, there is a market for so many of them or is it something that you think, is I it think, a trend that you think will continue and more yeah, players? Yeah, I think will so. I think so. I mean, there are already so many players and it's astonishing that there are so many. And I mean, I really wonder um, how successful they are and they will be, especially the guys who don't come from uh, coffee farming families because i'm i'm guessing that while it, there is it is a gl- growing clientele it's still uh, very small right now so it's a tough business to be in yeah but because right now there must be like niche batches of these yeah. coffees right. Right. Like, yeah but like you're saying for the guys who already have plantations it doesn't really make too much of a difference they're just sort because of, it's a know, subsidiary expand, business yeah, yeah, right. expanding but their they know business. that they know that this is a direction that they have to move in they have to go online um, you know just to be relevant um, and but, also you know so how much of this is the, the sort of roasting of the beans and stuff like that because you you know you be, you're sourcing from like like you mentioned somebody like uh, blue talk I was taking stuff from different places it's their skill in how they sort of so essentially what they do is they buy the beans mm-hmm. right and then they get them roasted yeah. so blue Tokai has its own uh, roasting machine mm-hmm. And it has, in fact, in Delhi, it has, in Saidullah Jab in Delhi, they have a little coffee shop and a roastery. Hmm. So the beans are roasted there twice a week. Okay. So they have full control over how it's roasted, which is very important hmm. because uh, the flavor is impacted by the roast. Mm-hmm. Um, but other guys who don't have their own roasting machines, hmm. because it's an expensive piece of equipment, they get it done. You can sort of rent uh, a machine mm. in a roastery. Yeah. And so the Indian bean gets it done in Mysore, in this place called Sagar in Karnataka. Okay. And in a couple of other places. In mm. fact, the the blue tokai we know is sort of going to come, is coming to Bombay with its roastery as well. We don't know yeah. when exactly, but it should be soon. Yeah. So that's uh, That's right. So I mean... Uh, in Lower Perel. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm guessing since it's called the roastery, they'll be roasting beans yeah. over there. Yeah there as well and you know you mentioned in your review of this I mean you can go over to our site and look at this uh, where you mentioned that if you brewed the coffee in different uh, like if you if you brewed it in a mocha pot for instance it tasted different from if you uh, you know right so I mean I uh, what I did is I tried uh, not for all of them but for most of them I brewed them in three different ways like I, I brewed uh, them in a French press uh, in a mocha pot uh, but, uh, but of course you know you have different grinds for mm-hmm. each mm-hmm. but but whatever, I just wanted to see how the flavors varied. And also, uh, which is my favorite brewing technique, I cold brewed them. Mm-hmm. So um, just to see sort of how the flavors varied. And, and some of them tasted better one way than In the fact, other. In fact, there are cold brewing br- brands entering now. Yeah, so, you there know. are a couple, I think. Uh, I forget yeah, what they call it. Um, you know. They, I know one that's unbranded, a friend of mine, uh, Anish Basin, is actually working on it. Um, then there is something called they just call themselves 
cold brewed coffee for now because it hasn't yet right sort of completely marketed itself right. but how would you sort of i don't really understand cold brewing so how would you sort of pre-sell that it's it's very simple it's essentially coffee that's brewed at um, room temperature or water for oh, between okay. 12 hours and 24 hours and you can do this at home i mean i do it at home i just put coffee in a jar and i top it up with water and i leave it for 24 hours okay and what it does is the does sort it take of the, the edge off it takes the bit? edge off so it's okay. not as acidic because if you're pouring hot water right. you're sort of forcing the flavor and the mm-hmm. oils out immediately this happens over a period of 24 hours so it's gentler but the flavor is far far better okay yeah so even a uh, rubbish coffee um it you can drink it if you cold, cold brew, brew it, it. Yeah. So we've established that these are niche brands and they're selling small quantities. I'm guessing that would affect the price, right? Is this more than your store bought? This is obviously more than your store bought mass produced your Nescafe. Nescafe. Right? No, no, definitely. It definitely is. So I mean on an average um coffee for hipsters once yeah. again. On an average I I think the price is uh 250 upwards like 250 for 200 for grams. 200 grams. Right. Okay. Uh that's that's how much it And how long costs. would that last you? I just depends on how much frequency you, you, you drink right okay but it last you for a good number of days okay yeah Yeah, so that's that's great. Um a lot about coffee there. We have all the details about where you can buy them, what they taste like, what they cost uh on the site. Um uh, check out Pranati's article and that's it for Bombay Binge. We'll be back with the scene. Long long ago, not in Bethlehem, but in a place nearby, there was a wonderful birth of a huge show which I like to call Cyrus says, a show that encapsulates everything in human history. from the first homo sapien to the last homo sapien uh, who's traversed the entire world and then come back to india this is a show which tells you everything about everything if you want to know avoid google come to us it's called cyrus says get new episodes every monday on the ivm podcast app or wherever you get your podcast on you get one banana water free with every podcast right i'll just check that i'll just check that the scene Uh, so welcome to the scene and in this episode we'll be speaking to two Bombay artists Samir Kulavur and Z Kulavur uh the two of them run Bombay Duck Designs and so they're going to be t- talking to us about uh drawing the city so um so Samir you've i mean i know that you sort of you spe- you you've done um like a series on kala ghoda right. you've done like a lot of uh, bombay themed um, illustration right. so do you want to start by telling us uh, which parts of the city you enjoy drawing like what's a great place to go to the sketch uh there are so many places in bombay that you know uh, make for a great uh, you know sketching session so for example we have these uh, sketching um, you know kind of small sessions outdoor ske- sessions it's called free draw and the last one we had at uh, banganga okay so, so by we who do you mean do you so have a group uh, of people yeah it's like me uh, lokesh karekar who runs lokopopo design and uh, you know people who are associated with us you know people who work for us people who freelance for us and you know that kind of a team so mm-hmm. yeah i mean like there is banganga you know there is uh, the 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 bpt garden bombay yeah bombay port garden. garden in uh, kolaba uh, i mean that's if you want to be in a more natural kind of space mm-hmm. yeah. then of course there are you know tons of cafes and you know you have all kinds of uh, right but yeah. with the bombay potters <coughs> garden um, what exactly do you sketch i mean i mean i've seen the garden it's a lovely garden but right. like ban ganga there's a lot of life there's a lot of activity right, right. what would you sketch at bpt and bpt the I landscape mean, yeah the landscape and you know even like small things like uh, it has a small botanical uh, you know garden within so that you know it opens up a lot of different shapes uh, right. for you i mean a lot of different they have a uh, collection of cacti cacti amazing you know and then even just leaves or the way plants are um, i mean anything that you know kind of kind of like catches our fancy yeah and uh, i saw your recent exhibition hmm. uh, which was please have a seat right. at artisans right and um, you know there was a bunch of things there like you had uh, uh, an illustration of looking at it like some people playing cricket at where was that was that at um, What are the maidans? Uh no, the <clears throat> the cricket one was actually uh, the image of a clap. So oh, it yeah. was not directly connected yeah. to cricket. Yeah, but it was, was inspired by looking at 
Yeah, well, something. it was gully cricket. It was oh, okay. It was just, so, oh, okay. just like a bunch so of like kids. Street uh, scenes. Yeah, street yeah, scenes. Yeah. A bunch of people, yeah. kids actually who are... Yeah. And, uh, you know, the city has featured so much in your work. I right. mean, just to give people a background, uh, uh, you know, some of them, they have done a whole bunch of stuff and uh, they're actually most... Many of our listeners might probably know them for the folks uh, have seen their work at the weekender festivals, right? Because you guys yeah. do everything for weekender, right? Yeah. From the yeah. publicity material to like the bags and the t-shirts right. and stuff right. like that. And uh, you also do something called the hundred percent zine, right? And a series of like these uh, illustrated books, right? And those books have actually featured things like cycle walas yeah. and you know uh, your la- uh, the very recent one was the called Blue, Blue right? Yes. Which was about uh, the topland Dance. scene. That yeah. you see yeah. all over the city, mm. so it's a really sort of interesting take, to looking at just stuff that everybody sees every day, and how do you sort of represent that, right. you know, in in an illustration or artwork. So, right. uh, I one thing that and I also have also the Kala Ghoda illustration. Yeah, 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 the Kala Ghoda illustration, which is basically uh, this huge panoramic, wide uh, panoramic sort of, uh, of you know streetscape yeah. you know kind what's, of things. Oh, you know, I mean, just sort of like, connected to what you're saying. What's very interesting is that you have so many things that you'll cover about Bombay mm. but it's never like that that chaos is somehow you, you, you're you able to distill one particular thing mm. and how does that how do you do that like how do you sort of get it down to one thing like say the right. cycle or a pair of hands or whatever right, you know that's right. I think is very interesting because there's so much going on in Bombay all the right, time right. but you sort of communicate that with very little right uh, I, I don't know I mean how to like put that but uh, <clears throat> I mean I find a lot of connection between things and uh, my thing is to kind of make like draw patterns from the city and I kind of enjoy doing that I mean it's just it comes naturally to me to observe a you know certain scene or and then make connection to that so for example uh, the blue book uh, the first time you know I kind of mm-hmm. came up with the idea was on this uh, Western Express Highway at 3 a.m. you know coming back from a party kind of slosh and there's like a I'm in a cab and there's a massive you know truck just passing by which has a helicopter which was covered with blue tarp you know so that just hit me are you sure that that he was seeing that (laughs) how how did you know it was a helicopter no I took a photograph I took a photograph so that I can you know look at it in the morning again and it wasn't like it was a helicopter so (laughs) which party was this when was it (laughs) How much Whatever did you have it, to does, it was great, you know. And what, what the were they distributing? <laughs> yeah, and what were they handing out? <laughs> yeah, all secrets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So book. that gave you the idea. That was the starting point. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that really hit me. I mean, we are like so accustomed to seeing things and but you need something that, you know, kind of gives you a slap on your face and makes you want okay. to like <laughs> look at that, you know, look at that and do something about it. You know, that, right. that kind of a thing. Right. So, but you know, this is something that I've seen in quite a few uh, illustrators' work is in Bombay and I suppose it's a natural um, outcome of living in the city is that a lot of work fo- focuses on trade and commerce. Hmm. Uh, even your work, for instance, like even with the cycle walas, a lot of them are, you know, people hmm. you know, cha- cha- selling chai and coffee right. and, uh, you know, people working in different uh, sort of trades and right. then you have like your Xerox, Xerox wala series right. which again, you know, is in that uh, space, and then um, you know, so all these kind of things. Is that a big part of you think? Do you think of like being in Bombay that you see so much of like uh, you know commerce happening here? Yeah, I mean, people come to Bombay for money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it, and like that kind of uh, grows into so many different things. You know, you get to see so much. People are doing so many things. Mm-hmm. So I think the root of all of it is, you know, kind of being the financial capital in some way. Right. And that's and the yeah. city of aspirations. So so I think, yeah, I mean, right. that is a key factor. When it comes but um, to Z, I mean, you were just telling <laughs> us how your... Um, you specialize in type. Yeah. So, um, and Bombay has a lot of really interesting type. So, is, is that something that you look out for a lot? Uh, you know, or sort of hoardings or shop fronts? I mean, so, um, inspiration of Bombay and type. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of hand painted signage that you see all around. Um, my main inspiration comes from this Mohammed Ali Road area. Right. Which has so much going on. There's mm-hmm. hand painted signage. There are like local posters. Everything is so beautiful. But in that crowd, everything just gets lost. And then picking those that type from there is what 
I you know I like and I majorly work on Arabic type design mm-hmm. so that is my main inspiration so, so, so there's a lot of Arabic. yeah right yeah, right so there's a lot of um, Arabic uh, type you see on yeah. Mohammad Ali Road like yeah. a lot of uh, you know clothes shop clothes etc shop. have uh, does they have political posters which are like a really nice screen print bright colors uh, you know pasted on walls pasted on the flyover right so that all and plus there are a lot of uh, people who work in glass mm-hmm. calligraphy and glass in mm-hmm. Mohammad Ali Road area right so there's a lot going on there and also Mohammad Ali Road it's like it used to be a center for Urdu literature yeah and you still have a few surviving Urdu, Urdu libraries yeah 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 right. there's one uh, actually right next to JJ School of Art um, Anjuman Islam right. they have a yeah. big uh, Urdu library right yeah mm-hmm. that okay. they don't really entertain everyone <laughs> Okay, yeah. but you have access? Not really. Not really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know, uh, you guys have also worked on a number of commercial projects, right? Yes. You've done work for people like Pepsi and Nike mm. and a whole bunch of folks. Mm. And you've done music videos, you've done music videos for Pentagram, you've done uh, album covers for right. yeah. Something Relevant Zero. Now, uh, with the music stuff, they all happen to be Bombay bands. Right. Is that is the city, does it find itself into your commercial work as well or... Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it does. I mean, uh, just because we live here, mm-hmm. and I tend to be more inspired by my surroundings. Yeah. So, if I was, for example, living in New York, mm-hmm. it, I probably would be about New York, you know. Yeah. Just that I absorb a lot of things around me, um, and yeah. that lends itself, and and then you make connections between, you know, it could be anything, music or food, or, and then you connect that with what's happening around me in in the life mm-hmm. around, you know, in Bombay. So, yeah. kind of like I try to make that connection and that's how it works. Sure. You know, with even for uh, Something Relevant, it was, you know, again, this panoramic yeah. you know, poster. And you. with the band, we kind of developed that idea. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it had a lot of, you know, political comments as well, like the Shivaji statue. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, so... <laughs> So, just so what, what was the Shivaji statue doing? So was it drowning? <laughs> no, it was like rising on a horse <laughs> from the middle of nowhere yeah. uh, and around like shanties and you know slums. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, rise of uh, warrior. Rising. <laughs> right. it, was, it was being saved by a, an amazing force. I think at like that time it was uh, it it was really in the news. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. one of the it was just frivolous. You it know, was something relevant at that time. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was. <laughs> So this was on the something element uh, their yeah, album cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. has like a small Shivaji somewhere. Yeah. Oh, okay. So how do how do these projects work with both of you? I'm really interested to know <laughs> creatively because as three of us we think so differently about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Not necessary that just because you're related things have right. to. Yeah. So right. how does Tell us a little bit about that synergy. No, we, we basically spend 90% of the time fighting. Yeah. Right. Oh, so we can I identify with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the rest of the 10% we uh, kind of try to be sweet to each other. No, but like artistically, artist- how, how are, are you, you aligned? Sort of aligned? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I understand her, uh, you know, uh, Way of design. how she approaches uh, type design. So mm-hmm. for this, for the show, for example, for Please Have a Seat, she designed yeah. a beautiful catalog. Right. You yeah. know? And I couldn't have thought about it the way she did. Yeah. And obviously, like she thinks likewise about me when it comes yeah. to illustration. So that's kind of... You have like a mutual respect yeah. that way. Sometimes there are, uh, you know, times when, you know, it doesn't quite match. Uh, but I guess like that's, you know, normal. Yes. But then we kind of work it out because you have to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you Actually, know, his work and mine complements mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. So, um, using uh, illustration So, you do, and just design, to clarify, you do uh, gra- the more graphic... Uh, graphic design, type design yeah. is right. what is my it forte. Is your yeah. forte. Yeah. Even with Weekender, yeah. I think like most of the type design and stuff was... Okay. Yeah. Her, uh, yeah. Type yeah. Type. You know, and speaking about the exhibition, yeah. I remember asking you uh, whether you had plans to put any of those on t-shirts. Right. And you said that you... And you have actually got some of your work on t-shirts some really yes. nice ones right. like uh, you've collaborated with the culture shop right. yes. and uh, Paul Smith who, which has who, the bicycle that has the yeah. bicycle yeah. one yeah. right, right. Um, but you said that you're not sure because you feel it sort of dilutes the art a little bit now not taking away from the other cool stuff you've already right. <laughs> you know is that something have you changed your opinion about that or is that something that well you, I don't know I mean in the case of please have a seat I just feel it's super personal to me mm-hmm. And I wouldn't want it, want to see it on, you know, people's clothes. Just that. Uh, 
Like mm. walls are okay. Walls are fine, you know. You can yeah. I mean, it has a different impact on a wall. Okay. Is it I because think. it's biographical? I mean, is it drawing from your own life? Probably. Okay. All the others uh you know, they have a kind of a subject mm-hmm. uh, that's yeah. separate from me. Yeah. Um so I think yeah, that's yeah. kind of the yeah, because I, I just felt that they, they lent themselves really easily to like a t-shirt because sure. you know they're just like these very clean basic yeah. lines yeah. and yeah. you know and you, there's so much to say. But what no, no, you but do- I approve of this. I don't think everything should be I so mean, highly commercialized, yeah. especially yeah. <laughs> yeah. if when it comes to art. Correct. It know? does lend itself very well, but uh, I want people to see the exhibit in that mm-hmm. context and in that experience. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not just an image. Yeah. There's a story behind it. There is, cool. uh, you know an incident behind each mm-hmm. drawing yeah and i didn't want to dilute that you know if if you just put the image on a t-shirt it mm-hmm. would just be an image uh, uh, well you know just carrying you know with them yeah right. but i think the captions make so much of a difference right? that's when the illustrations really come alive yeah, because then you see exactly what you're looking at mm-hmm. and uh, but uh, but you so can also interpret it in your own way that's true. you can I'm just seeing hands or like, like legs and i'm yeah. like this could mean something different to me, which I think Correct. is great because I like the sort of open hmm. endedness of. Yeah, that was a point of keeping it uh, open, you know. Yeah, and there were the captions were really minimal. Right. In the. Right. So you your work you can see it on your website, which is bombaydesigns dot com, right? Right. Right. So That's the commercial the, side of it. Yeah. I have my own personal website. It's samirkulover dot com. So, so you can see. Please have a seat. Uh, some on samirkulover dot com. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great. Great. And you know, I saw on your website you sort of describe yourself as illustrator and visual artist. Now, right. is there like a big di- like you know to explain like what exa- why you decided to separate the two? <laughs> I. <laughs> I there like, is uh, a story. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like everyone around me. I mean, people who are close to me. They know I hate labels, any kind of labeling. Yeah. So, Paul Smith. Uh, no, not, not that kind of label. Culture uh, well, It's more like uh, you know, what do you call? What are you like? What are you? Then, uh, then I'm thinking. Okay, on this project, I was an illustrator. On this mm-hmm. project, I was an art director. Mm-hmm. On this project, I'm just purely being an artist. Yeah. So there are so many roles, or in a certain project, I'm being like the motion graphic designer. You know. Okay. So. I want to keep that open, mm. you know, and kind of just uncomfortable with kind of labeling myself. Yeah. It also limits what I can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, like with every project that I, you know, do next, I don't want that kind of baggage with me that, okay, okay you're an illustrator, so you just have to illustrate. Yeah. So, and people, some people are comfortable with that. It's fair enough, you know, some people like to call themselves uh, editorial illustrators or, you know, yeah. whatever they want. But I don't want to like yeah. slot Myself. Like a musician, what and kind like, of I don't believe in genres. What, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of projects do you just say no to? Like, do people come with a random request, like do our shadi ka cards or <laughs> paint a wall? I'm sure because people don't have a filter when they're asking, or yeah. they don't know right, what an artist right. would be offended by. Or in fact, I don't get offended. I listen out, and like, then you know, if conceptually mm-hmm. it's something that I can contribute to really well, then I would do a shadi ka card also. Okay. We are really cool Shadi ka card. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, for me, it's, we have, right? Yeah, we oh, have. Did you work on, uh, on Nisa's? Was it no, it was uh, Arjun's. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. So, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Yeah. if the concept or if the idea is exciting, then I, I would do anything, you know? Yeah. Uh, right. Then it's okay. for me. Then it's not selling your soul or yeah. you know yeah. whatever you call it. Yeah. I mean, if I'm interested, then yeah. I'm fine with it. You yeah. Know? But there were also friends of yours, right? That so it was not like somebody random coming. Yeah, and it had a music angle to it. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, the yeah. Yeah. Spoof, yeah. So people so who uh, who have <laughs> obviously not attended this wedding. This is Arjun Ravi and right. uh, Samira, Samira Kanwar, Kanwar yeah. from uh, NH7. Their wedding was a. Uh, music festival theme thing right. okay last question before we almost run out of time is okay. do you have is there like what is your definition of Bombay design I know it's a kind of like abstract question but yeah like, for like, someone this who is doesn't like, uh, like really labels <laughs> you're asking him yeah. but yeah. that's the other thing design. you know like uh, no, that's the other thing even uh, during the exhibit everyone was like you know it's, it's so Bombay it's yeah. so Bombay and yeah. I couldn't get it you yeah. know like what's Bombay about human mm-hmm. gestures isn't it like you know, universal. Mm. I just saw so, limbs. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I know. Yeah, no, but I mean, it's um, interesting that people kind of see me like that. Yeah. Uh, and I, probably because I've been, you know, mm. rooted in the city for so long. Yeah. But Bombay design, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. It's completely... 
I mean, there's it's not something that we can. It's everything put and in nothing. Words. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next question, Amit. <laughs> well, so it's time to wrap up, okay. and so we'll be back with uh, Metro Station. And you'll be back in Metro Station too. All right. Okay. Yeah. See you. Hi, I'm Amit Verma, the host of the weekly podcast, The Seen and the Unseen. In my show, I examine the seen effects and the unintended consequences of public policy and private action. I show how policies meant to help the poor often end up hurting the poor. I've done episodes so far on demonetization, GST, surgical strikes, immigration, and MRP, and I will continue my forensic assault on the truth in the weeks to come. Catch the show every Monday on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app that you prefer or visit seenunseen.in for all the latest updates. Metro Station. Welcome to Metro Station and today we're going to be talking about Mazgao. Now Mazgao is a place that it has been around for ever. But it's kind of like it's a this place in Bombay. I mean, don't make it sound like it belongs to some other country. <laughs> but <laughs> well, it was originally like one of the seven islands. Island. So one seven, island was yes. Moscow. So and by the way, our guests from the scene, Samir and Z Kolavur, are back. Yeah, uh, I was coming to that in this section. They work out of there. Their yeah. studio yes. is there, and uh, Samir actually lived there for a few years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, we're going to talk about this. Is not secret city. We're not calling the secret city our other segment. Yeah, because Moscow is not exactly it's secret. It's not exactly a secret, uh, but it's also um, one part of the city that, I mean, I don't want to say has resisted change, but it a large parts of Moscow look the way they have looked for many years, many. and so so, so the there's a slow. Change has been creeping. It hasn't been uh, sort of. It hasn't, hasn't been bulldozed. Yeah, it's it hasn't been lowered. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons why it's also kind of this part of the city that nobody really talks about. I mean, it's been right. You know, I mean, in the general imagination general of Bombay, imagination, it, it occupies a very small yeah, place. I mean, people talk about you know, uh, like Andheri and like uh, for all the wrong reasons, chamber <laughs> and stuff like that. But you never hear about Moscow. Moscow, yeah. but it's it's an absolutely fascinating uh, part of the city, and it's full of uh, these amazing sites. Like you guys, your studio is near Hasnabad, right. and Hasnabad is the mausoleum of the first Aga Khan. He was the leader of the Ismaili sect of. Shias and it's this place is known as Mazgao's Taj Mahal because it has these three domes yeah, and yeah. two minarets. Yeah. So I mean that's quite an amazing uh, place to work. Yeah, I mean, you, you're like your neighbors essentially. Right. Yeah. So, d- I mean, do you guys, you know, when you want some inspiration, do you walk around or do you visit that place well, at all? It was an accident when I first saw Hasnabad. I mean, I didn't even know mm-hmm. for about three, four months after moving in. To right. Moscow that that existed, right. and like once I was taking a taxi ride and just happened to see this Taj Mahal <laughs> in <laughs> Moscow, you know, and like I was rubbing my eyes, you know, yeah. what was this? Because it's so, uh, and it's it's this beautiful marble structure it is, and yeah. it's clean. It's really well it's maintained. Yeah. It's breezy. Yeah, it's yeah. white. Yeah, it's white for a change. Yeah, and it's, it's not gotten. No red pan stains. No fungus wow. stains. Nothing. You know, and uh, you can, you know, if you want, you can just go and sit on the steps. I yeah. mean, I saw when I visited recently. I saw like lots of these school and college kids just mm-hmm. sitting and just enjoying the breeze. Shooting breeze. <laughs> Mm. During the days, yeah, <laughs> and there's also a farm next. There to is it. a farm so behind, behind it, behind and this it. is the amazing thing. So mm. you just uh, you cross the mausoleum and you go straight, and it's in the same compound, and you come mm. across this beautiful farm that has probably been there for generations. For really time, yeah, for a yeah. really long time, and uh, they grow vegetables over there. Nice. So uh, you know, you guys said when we were talking uh, before we were walked into the studio about yeah. how you discovered this place and you mm-hmm. said you discovered it through Mathar Pakadi, right? Uh, well, yeah, a broker. I mean, I was looking to move to this part of town and mm-hmm. because all my clients at that time were based around Lower Paril. And you didn't want to be in Lower Paril? <laughs> um, I mean, I didn't mind that but okay. it was just too expensive uh-huh. at that point and Mazgao was kind of like, you know, like next door, out of but it yeah. but still very close mm-hmm. and uh, I just discovered it through a broker and I didn't even know that, you know, this place existed, you know, mm-hmm. the village existed. Yeah. I had no idea. I'd been living in Bombay for like, what, 25, 26 years at mm-hmm. that time. And I didn't know. All your life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at that time when, yeah. when I just yeah, yeah. Uh, moved into Moscow and I didn't know. So Where did I you move it, from? From Burbli. Okay. So I've spent my, and me and Zainab, we both have oh, spent our childhood in Burbli and, yeah. and then went to Sydney and mm-hmm. then JJ and then 
Yeah. yeah. So, so Matar Pakari is this uh, for those of you who haven't been there. It's this beautiful East Indian settlement, and the name roughly translated, I think it means a cluster of huts. Okay. Um, and it's got these gorgeous, quaint villas, mm. um, and it's really like this little hamlet. Like mm. it surprises you. It's you ka- just isn't it kind of like like Ranbar and Bandra or something like that, which it's is like Pali village. Pa- Pali village. Sort of like yeah. minus the commercialization. Minus, commercialization yeah. is got all and these sort of. It's, it's minus the hipsters. Minus the hipsters yes. is so important. <laughs> it's so important, <laughs> guys. Yeah. You have Stop raised a uh, hating on Ranbar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, but yeah, most of the I think the demographic it's it's an aging demographic. You see these yeah. old couples on the balconies, and it's really mm. quite beautiful. And um, as you guys was saying that the residents are very protective of the area so they haven't yeah. let any builders in yeah, and you coach. you were living in the only building yeah, in Matar Pakadi the and ugliest I've, building in ugliest Matar building Pakadi. yeah I've seen it it sticks <laughs> yeah. out like an eye so yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, but but what's really great is that uh, I mean redevelopment hasn't come to hmm. Matar I mean, Pakadi it's been, they've been trying but the residents have been so resistant that we've actually been able to fend them off yeah. which is quite incredible yeah. um, and I've also tried to get it uh, declared a heritage precinct and I, I think yeah. it is a heritage uh, heritage precinct hmm. um, so so that's one of the you know beautiful things about you know there seems to be such a cosmopolitan area even though it's like such a you know it's kind of cordoned off in a sense it's, you know perceptually but hmm. uh, there's also a Chinese temple there right? there is a Chinese, Chinese have you guys temple. been there no, no not been there been yeah. Quite a lot. so um, yeah. there's this part of Masgaon it's called uh, the Nawab Tank Road area right. and uh, you know you had a a lot of Chinese settlers, you know, yeah. people yeah. who moved yeah. to Bombay, uh, who were shippies essentially, right. and mm-hmm. just settled down here. So yeah, a lot because of because of the dock, because of the docks, yeah. right? Um, so they still, you still have a few Chinese families living in right. that area, and they have this Chinese temple which is dedicated to the warrior god Quan Kung, yeah. wow. <laughs> and it's quite a lovely temple. It's on the first floor. The legend of Quan Kung. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and sounds like, sounds like a kung fu film. Yeah. 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 One of the warriors. Yeah, but it, you know, it's it's a beautiful room and everything is red like you have these red curtains and these mm. red cloth panels and nice. red incense sticks so and do they have like do they celebrate Chinese New Year they there? do celebrate Chinese New Year every year so that's when I think the temple gets uh, its largest congregation otherwise mm. it's fairly empty like the time I visited there was no one there there was one yeah. grumpy caretaker and that mm. was it <laughs> there's a lot of your well initially when you guys moved in did mm. it sort of inspire a lot of sketches and stuff um the area because uh, it's got so much yeah initially it did i i do remember having like a sketchbook with uh, you know views from the terrace of my ugly building yeah. <laughs> so i had a bunch of drawings from there but i mean after that point it just, uh, just you know it's part of you know my surroundings so right. but i got used to the fact that you know i enjoy being around mm-hmm. these old buildings you know right yeah and i can't I would never like move to a, you know, the concrete or you know. Yeah, the, like yeah. lower parallel, which is now just full of glass stars. Yeah, yeah. glass but, you stars. Know, basically. Uh, so, for people who've actually never been to Moscow, how do you get there? I mean, I think that that's the <laughs> biggest problem. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. It's a serious problem. Why like, is that yeah. a serious problem? Because there's no infrastructure. I mean, like you, there are two left turns. And right. both are so From where? narrow. Mm-hmm. One is uh, just before Gloria Church. Right. Okay. And you have to pass through uh, like the Musawa Bazaar, right. the mm-hmm. wood market and the all that. The wood market, yeah. So people don't end up going there. There's nothing beyond after that left yeah. except for the wood bazaar. Okay. Right. And the next left is the Baikala police station left. Okay. There's one more after that, mm-hmm. which uh, after which the JJ Flyer ends, Mary's. you take the right. But mm-hmm. that goes to the St. Mary School. Okay. Mm-hmm. So right. there are three of those, but still it's, you know, I mean that those left turns. Yeah, but you know, know for so how do I actually get there? Then finally, <laughs> no, no, so the first time I was <laughs> interviewing Samir for Hindustan Times uh-huh. or something, I remember the same set of instructions uh, okay. vividly. He's like, there are two left ch- uh, turns. There's Gloria Church, <laughs> and I was like hopelessly lost. This Bandra <laughs> babe coming out into like so essentially you, you just yeah, take yeah, the, yeah, Gloria the Gloria Church lane and, and you'll and eventually you eventually get know, to Moscow. This is the thing. Like Gloria Church is one of the few places I've actually been to among on this. List and but that is actually technically in Baikala. Hmm. It, it is, is so in yeah, Baikala. So the original church, which was you know built in 1632 by the Portuguese, um, it was at the base of Masgao Hill. There mm-hmm. was a hill in Masgao, yeah. and half of Masgao used to be was owned by this very uh, f- very famous family called the 
the Souza Lima family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but this church was demolished for no particular reason in 1911 and mm-hmm. in two years later they, they built, built the one oh, where okay. it, the current the, 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 the current which is one, right next yeah. to is it next to Messina hospital is that it's not far from Messina yeah, hospital yeah, was, but and Messina hospital you guys have probably seen it from yeah, the outside it's outside. another um yeah, it's amazing beautiful uh, beautiful structure it, it used, used to be the home of, uh, of the Sassoon, Sassoon family. family oh sort of you know yeah so david sassoon very famous very famous We'll maybe Iraqi. dedicate an episode of Metro Station to the Sassoon family at some point in time. We'll yeah, be talking we about do. all this great history that Mazgao has. But mm. as people who've been working there for in the recent past, mm. what are like some of the places that y'all hang out? <laughs> I mentioned a couple of hot spots: Gupta Kulfi yeah. and Super Bakery. Yeah. And you also said that it was the bread capital of Bombay. Yeah, Mazgao <laughs> is Mazgao is the bread capital of Bombay, and there are. Uh, Tons of bakeries, actually. I mean, mm-hmm. if you yeah. walk into so the left from Baikala Police Station, uh-huh. it's a Love lane, lane called Love Lane. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And that and itself lane. has like three bakeries. So. Yeah. Where do you all get your breads from? Yeah, like your version of Mazgaon. Super bakery. Know. Super bakery. Okay. Yeah, when I used to live there, it was super, super bakery. bakery. Yeah, so for the pow, they make yeah, good pow. Yeah, great okay. pow. Yeah. Okay. It's a great name. Fresh super pao. bakery. Yeah. And I have a photograph actually. I should like show it to you. And uh, Gupta Kulfi. Gupta great Kulfi is in right now. Summer. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. What kind of flavors? And they have everything. Everything. I, Fruit, I, you should try the anjir. Okay. No, it's. Called Anjir Badam Bahar. Anjir Badam Bahar. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's the flavor. Well, that's oh, but God. they serve it in matkas or sticks? No, they serve it as a disc. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. They also have a candy, but uh, right. that's what they Neighborhood serve. Neighborhood gems. It's a very, very old place. Mm. Yeah. Is there it's anything new there? I mean, that's a great thing about this our place. Studio, right? Our studio. Our studio. Yeah, your studio, which you actually <laughs> can visit, <laughs> as you told us. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So are you all like known local, sorry, Pranati? No, so we've had uh, burka clad women just walk into the studio and ask us, you know, do you make burkas? You know, really? stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, there was Which a guy who came to, recently, two days back, who came to buy duck pack bags. Ah, oh. okay. Yeah. Because there is a duck in our name. Yeah. 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 So we've had a lot so of people had, coming uh, in. So you've had, you have some prominent signage outside. No, no that door has a doodle. Yeah. No, that that's the old one. It's gone. Yeah. So it's now gone. you're no longer oh, okay. in the ugly building. No, so no, where no. are you now? We are in Hilal building and okay. we are in an attic studio. Okay. Oh, nice. And so we have like two arch windows. That yeah, the building is 100 years old. And it's completely made of wood, I think. Our studio is completely wood. I mean, the pillars are wood and the flooring is wood. And it's like heavy duty stone construction from outside yeah. okay and, but yeah. uh, have you guys ever for uh, inspiration or just uh, to get a look at the view been to kaka baptista garden oh that oh not yet no, not, not yet. yet i've heard that it's like a make out uh, garden and i never got the <laughs> yeah. chance to take someone along <laughs> yeah it's, it's called kaka baptista it's called kaka wow. baptista and it was named after joseph baptista who was his freedom fighter yeah. and so it's on a it's on an elevation yeah, it okay is. and so beneath the garden you have a reservoir it's called the bhandarwada reservoir so oh. it's basically full it's of it's mazgaon's bandstand yeah kind of <laughs> kind of but you, you know what I, you have you get a great view yeah, I know. Of uh, the eastern side of the city. Correct, correct. So correct. Uh, when you're standing on top, and there's a little walking track, and yeah, cool. it's full of couples. Ron, yeah. tell us why the you went actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's actually <laughs> how you discovered. <laughs> Don't oh, ask the issue. No, I mean, all of us, we've been writing about Bombay for so many years, so I suppose it was just on one of those. Yeah, but with yes, whom? One of yeah. your. With whom? <laughs> 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 Weren't you doing a piece on uh, places to make out in Bombay? Yeah, it was a tried and tested. <laughs> <laughs> I tried and tested all these parks. Um, yeah, at the, at, actually, at the foot of the hill, you have Dockyard Station. Yeah, so the, right. Uh, the when you talk about the view, there's a temple on top of the hill. And yeah, is, every yeah. time people get off the train, they get off, turn around and start praying. <laughs> and it's oh. weird. Mm-hmm. When I first started coming here, I got off the train and I saw these two, three aunties are literally praying. And I was like, what is happening? I didn't mm. know about the hill. Oh. But then after a couple of days, I realized, oh, they are praying to that. Mm. And not the oh, indicator. So, yeah, <laughs> not, not the indicator. The indicator. <laughs> but it, it's <laughs> incredible that there's so many different kind of, you know, you have uh, Hasnabad, we have it's a temple, crazy. you have like mm. the Chinese temple. Yeah. It's 
Like you have a Jain temple. A Jain temple, which is actually the oldest Jain temple in the city. Wow. So I think it's one of the oldest. Yeah. You know, it's just so great that because this place is undiscovered, it's also kind of untouched. So mm. yeah. you, yeah. it's kind of safe. We don't we actually. We should not be uh, doing a podcast. Sound on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't go to. Mark no, this Sound is why we're telling you to go there in this weather. Hey, <laughs> Gupta <laughs> Kulfi will help. And Kaka oh, yes. Bassista <laughs> has benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And you. <laughs> And the super bakery for Pau. Correct. Exactly. And for all your design illustration requirements, you have yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go there if you want a burka embroidered. Oh, yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Okay. I think I want those weekend, uh, you know, those dancing uh, that figures, graphics figures on burka. On burka. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. You should consider that. I, I will recommend. So, uh, so that wraps up Metro Station. Thanks, Thanks so much for being, for being on, on our podcast. Thanks Thank for having you. us here. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the podcast and we'll be back next week. If you like listening to the podcast, check out Geek Fruit, hosted by Uber Geeks Tejas Menon and Jishnu Guha. The show talks about geek culture from an Indian perspective. Star Wars, comic books, science fiction and fantasy, TV shows and more. Excuse me, bhaiya. Excuse me. Bolye, madam. Menu me kya hai? Menu me seen and seen hai. Podcast hai, on course hai, Cyrus hai, Mer in India, Rediscovery Project, Empowering Series, Sex Vex hai, IVM Likes hai, Simplified hai, Keeping It Queer hai, Things and Destinations hai, My Neighbor Zuckerberg hai, or The Fan Garage hai. Aapko kya chahiye hai? Uh, ek baar repeat kar dhenge kya? Repeat, repeat nahi karta hum. Aap jao, IVMPodcast.com pe or suno ye sab. Ya fir download karo unka app. Sab aapke ungliyo pe.